Deep in this fog-covered forest lies a creature. Some call him Sasquatch. Some call him Bigfoot. Some even call him the Mountain Demon. He has been there since the beginning of time. Hiding, hiding forever from man. He lies in the forest, deep in the fog. He is the spirit of the forest. Hairy man, benefactor, spiritual, mental, and physical protector. Tribal elders believe Bigfoot's appearance can be prophetic. His blade reside in both the spiritual and physical world. One story says Bigfoot called Hairy Man as the spirit that determined that man would walk on two legs like him. It is said that people were afraid of Hairy Man. That made him sad, so he drew his picture on a rock depicting his sadness. I'm Master Hughes, and for many years as a nature lover and camper, I have traveled through forest, Texas, Arkansas, Oklahoma, for many, many years. I kept finding things that shouldn't be where they are and it made me curious and I started looking into the stories and legends of Bigfoot especially in Arkansas and Oklahoma over 15 years ago I was finding evidence of some creature living in the forest in fact not just a creature but small groups of these creatures over a five-year period I found a lot of evidence then about 10 years ago, it started getting smaller and smaller, and I was finding less evidence. But I still found evidence, ample evidence. Five years ago, it became very hard to find evidence, yet I still find some evidence. It's very evident to me at some point, there was a larger population of some creature living in this forest. And that for some reason, it has slowly gotten smaller and smaller. And the areas that they normally came to that I was able to locate slowly started decaying and showing no use. I created the movie, The Kimichi Beast Expedition, based on evidence I found. And then I did The Kimichi Beast Expedition 2, which had even more evidence. And then Trail of the Kimichi Beast. Now I'm back to explore what is happening to the creature that lived in these forests. Are they being decimated by the population, by human beings more and more coming into these forests? These roads up here get pretty rugged sometimes. Have a dry spell, then have a wet spell.
this mask to use, uh, I'm making this statement and I'm going to try to upload it. Most likely, I will quickly lose contact with anybody and will not be able to be reached by phone. Uh, that's how it is up here. It's dangerous. But if I can, I will post a video or two on YouTube for those that are watching. Wish me luck. Now, the reason I plan my expeditions usually for three weeks is because there's millions of acres of woods up here. Even if you have an idea where you're going, you're not just going to run in and locate him right away. You're not going to locate Bigfoot right away. You're not even going to get close. He moves. And so I always plan these a minimum two weeks and preferably three weeks in the woods to locate what I'm trying to find, to find evidence, to find in, in, information that tells me he's still present or what area he's in. It takes days and days of being in the woods, days and days of walking, even if you know where you're going, even if you know where you found him before. Uh, so that's why we usually do three weeks uh, when I do these trips. And quite often I have to come alone. A lot of people can't come. A lot of people aren't prepared. A lot of people aren't trained enough to do it. I don't pay, bring people out here that are untrained and might get themselves hurt. So it takes time, time and patience. There is evidence in these forests. Finding it is not easy. Sometimes it's closer than you think. Hundred square miles of woods, woods and woods and woods. Oklahoma itself was a bandit state. It was easy to hide here. Lots of criminal activity here. No telling how many people are buried in these woods that we don't even know about from the 1930s or earlier. Could a creature as big as me or bigger hide here? Absolutely. I've been in these woods and had a bear walk right by me and I couldn't even see him. 300 pound bear. Stands about five feet tall. Couldn't see him. It's easy to hide evidence here, especially if you don't know what you're looking for. And then what makes it worse? All the guys putting out fake Bigfoot videos and making evidence up. So it confuses the truth from illusion. Well, Everything I'm showing you is here. It is a fact. It was not created by me. The question is, where does it lead us? Will it give us the evidence that we need? Will it tell us the facts that we need to know about? What has gone on here for hundreds, if not thousands of years, right under man's nose? Bigfoot is supposed to be a bringer of prophecy. They say if you go deep into the forest to camp, he will appear in your dreams. They also claim if you sit there and meditate, he will appear in your mind and you can hear him. They say he can broaden your horizons. He can give you understanding of truth. Well, I can tell you this. Having sit out here many times in the middle of nowhere in the deep, deep forest, there may be some truth to that. They say Bigfoot shows up as a prophecy. He may show in your dreams to prepare you for the unknown, for something you may like or not like, for unexpected events. There may be some truth to that too because you get in here and it seems to broaden your mind. It seems that things come to you that hadn't come to you. It seems that you look at things in a different way. Maybe that is Bigfoot speaking to us. Maybe it is his prophecy to help prepare us.
here I'm in the back of the truck where we created the observation station. I'm going to give you an idea what it's like. We have a slot on the side of this that makes it hard for anything to see in, see what's going on, or see if anybody's in here. Yet it makes it easy for me to get a photo. As you can see, I can see way more than people realize. That's why I created this observation station. Find some evidence here and I find some evidence there and it starts to develop a pattern. And so now when I come, I come to these locations that I haven't found known evidence and I start to search from there. If I go to one area, there's nothing new. I go to the next area and I continue checking these areas until I find the newest evidence, uh, something to tell me that he's been moving in that area. It's easy for this creature to do 40 miles in a day. So you have to locate where he is at the time. You get up on one of these ridges, you can hear something going down below a long ways off. Uh, when you consider all that, you start to understand why it's so hard to find one of these creatures. And you start to understand the importance of finding tracks and finding where he has been, finding remnant evidence to help support what you're doing. That tells you areas that he may be in or he may not be in. Here's another print. See all the gravel here? See, it's less gravel, got pushed into the mud. Hill down here. Okay, we are finding tracks. And uh, most of the tracks are, are old or they were washed out during the heavy rains the other day. But we are finding evidence. Could it be a bear? Possibly, I don't think so. Uh, some of the tracks are too long for a bear track. And we're just south of a known location where we've found a lot of evidence of the Kimichi beast. Some people, the locals call it Kimichi. If you go 40 miles east, you're into the Washita beast territory. And so there is a ridge that goes from here clean over there, strangely enough. But I believe two different animals, two different creatures. Uh, we're going to find out more. Later, we're probably going to move a little farther north and follow the pattern of, of movement that we're finding. Now, these rock cliffs, you find them out in the middle of nowhere up here. You never know where you're going to find them, but any of them... Uh, could house a small cave with either a bear in it or Bigfoot. And you never know where you're gonna find them. They just appear out of the dirt. And uh, no telling what is living up in there. But we're taking a close look.
to see if anything is big enough to house shelter for Bigfoot. Wait a minute. Something has broken this clean off. That's something that big around. Snapped off. Could be a bear right in there. You never know it. You can get real close to them by accident and you don't want to. Okay, if you find saplings out here that have been over and broke, that's not Bigfoot, that's often tree disease. Quite common in the forest. But when you find a sapling that big around that was snapped off, then you have got something. It takes a lot of force to snap it off. So it's not been over and broke and sitting there, something just took hold of it and snapped it off. Could it have been a bear? Possible. Bears don't have a belt to grab a hold of something, but sometimes they'll take their paws and snap it off. The question is, was it a bear or was it the big man? This ground is so rocky and hard, it's hard to find any tracks on it. Nothing but rock. I'm checking out spots that I know for sure have been used by the big man but I have to check a lot of spots to locate him because of all the rain it washed away most of the tracks so I'm gonna to have to look twice as hard We're not going to find any tracks around here. Too many boulders, too many rocks. If we find a track, it's going to be coming off the slope. And like an animal trail, deer trail or something, that's usually where I'll find the tracks. There's enough soft soil around here. We might find a track along the creek farther away from the boulders. But the problem is there's so much leaf and mulch, it's, it's difficult to spot them.
Better get inside, lock her up. It's so thick in here, he could be right beside me and I couldn't see him. Now I'm going to show you a shelter, and if you've watched my other movies, Kimichi Beast Expedition, Kimichi Beast Expedition 2, Trail to Kimichi Beast, you'll see more shelters. It is not just one shelter here. There are groups of shelters through these forests. You just have to know where to look, and then it's still very hard to find them. Anything could be out here in these woods. Anything, literally. They tell you there's no cougars out here? There are cougars out here. You'll never see them. There are bears out here. You may see a bear, but a lot of times you don't ever see a bear. And there's a fair amount of bears out here. Well, come with me. I'm going to show you something. Hidden amongst the rocks is what most people never find. If they do accidentally walk across it, they don't realize what it is. Right here was a shelter. Now at one time, these limbs were across it. It is big enough for a large creature to sleep up in there. Easily something eight feet when you cross this here. At one time, these limbs were stacked until this whole thing was covered. And so it looked like a pile of brush and you couldn't even see this tiny cave or this area between the rocks, just totally hidden. You could walk right by it, wouldn't know it. But the thing is, these particular type of shelters are handmade. It takes a pair of thumbs to make them. These knot limbs just fell. At one time, this was covered with all the limbs. I actually knew about this one several years ago, and I saw it. And it was covered totally with limbs at that time. And it's uh, these have just been broken down and rotted over a period of time. So it's been a long time since this shelter was used.
Now, when I move through these forests looking for Bigfoot, I try to be as quiet as possible most of the time. I do occasionally knock, but not a lot. Bigfoot, I don't want him to think I'm hostile. I want to be quiet. I want him to allow to get close to me if he wants to, to look, to be curious. I don't want to do anything to make him think I'm hostile. Going through the woods hollering and screaming is not going to work. He's an elusive creature. He's a quiet creature. He's reserved. Get close to him. You have to do it his way. Can't do it your way. Have to be quiet. You have to be conservative. You have to understand that this creature is elusive enough that if you make him think you're hostile at all, you'll never see him. He'll never come close. Well, it's understanding the creature is what's important. Understanding how he thinks. Quiet, elusive, protective, and he wants to stay hidden. Now, for those of you that want to come on one of these excursions and go through this wilderness area, as I want to warn you, always be prepared. Take it seriously. Let me show you something. Emergency gear. Hard start in case I lose my battery. Tow rope. Throw rope for emergencies. It's full of emergency gear. Emergency wire connectors. I'm going to have to use some of those because I tore the wire out from under the truck a little while ago. This is not a game coming out here. This is a real expedition. And you should take it seriously. If you decide to do something like this, be prepared. It is dangerous out here. Now, I don't usually do this because I conceal informants' information to protect them when they call me and tell me about uh, something, Bigfoot or something else. Uh, as I've already said, I had several people did get through and contact me. I had this one very, very strange call. And uh, well, it's actually a text message because he couldn't get through. Uh, and I got a text. I don't know how it came through up in the mountains. And I just gave a quick response. I can't talk to you by phone. And uh, I got a text back with information. Now, I don't know what the person was trying to warn me about the Bigfoot that was apparently very close to where I was searching. I, don't, I assume he's guessing where I was searching. Uh, but he did send me information about that. I have concealed his phone number. I'm going to let you read it. This text actually was sent to me during the uh, expedition. And so I'll let you read it real quick so that you can see, but claiming there's a clan of Bigfoot there. And I, I again, I, I don't know if, if he's trying to give me a warning for safety reasons or if he has some other reason. I don't know, uh, but I didn't call the phone number back. I couldn't have it at the time anyway. Now, for those of you that don't believe in Bigfoot's prophecy, there are thousands of American natives that do. They believe they can speak to their spirit animals and have for thousands of years in their history. I can tell you this, as somebody who has spent weeks and weeks alone in the woods, the woods speak, nature speaks. All you have to do is listen. After a while, you can even hear the animal's thoughts. So why couldn't I hear the prophecy of Bigfoot? It's there. 
but you can't hear it going on a weekend. It takes time. You have to go in for long periods of time. Quiet, desolate areas. You have to clear your mind. Bigfoot, the prophecy, I think it's true. I know that you can hear the thoughts of the animals. You're not alone. The forest is alive. Many, many people have heard Bigfoot's prophecy. All I can say is this. Until you have spent a lot of hours alone in the woods in desolate places, and until you learn to go in and let go of the world and sit with the animals, the spirit guides, you can't hear anything but the shatter of your mind. That's the whole point of Bigfoot's prophecy. Yes, there's more goes on in the woods than you think, more than you ever believed. It's there, but you have to go and you have to seek it. As I said, thousands of American Indians, natives, have said they have heard the spirit animals speak and guide them. Nothing new there. Maybe it's just the way you think about it. Now, there's no way to search thousands and thousands of acres. What I do is I go to areas that I have found previous evidence of Bigfoot over the years. We're talking about, I've been coming up here over 15 years probably. And over those period of time, I've found certain spots numerous times have evidence and that's what I do. I go and I check those spots and I start from there. The newest evidence is where I start. But otherwise, thousands and thousands and thousands of acres, you're not walking around here and finding them. Here's another ring of stone. It would look like a camp place fire, but there's never been a fire in this. So what's the purpose of this? It's been a difficult trip. We're already five days into the trip. Uh, we have almost zero communication with other people. We've gotten a couple of information or, or questions sent to us via text message. And uh, that's very, very sporadic. Some people are asking me why we hadn't put a camper on this truck. Well, the roads are so rough and rugged where I go, the camper would cause the four wheel drive to overturn. There's no way you could take it up that trail. So I developed this to use as a blind. Uh, it does several things. It's lightweight. It can handle the four wheel drive road. And it allows me to look out, there's slots in it, where I can take photos. I can pull up to a very dense spot, sit there and take photos in the observation station. It's also been lined and the roof is protected. Uh, in case the weather goes real, real bad on this, uh, it will repel heavy hail. And so it was a win-win situation to develop this. It's light, it's mobile, it was inexpensive, and I can, tar I can tarp it over and rain's not getting in. So that's why we did it this way instead of buying a camper. There's no way in the world and the rugged spots I go that a camper would work on the back of this truck. So that's one thing I wanted to address. People want to know where we are. We don't tell people where we are. Where everything is stacked. It looks like something had a little mini shelter there at one time.
I know early, early in the morning when I'm searching, something's watching me. It's watching me from the real thick brush, watching me up, up, up on the ridges. So thick up there, I can't see what, uh, what it can be. I can't tell. I just know I'm being watched. And it's always happening early in the morning because at night, nighttime, as soon as it gets dark, I'm going into the back of the truck uh, and trying to record. But when I get out early in the morning and I'm out there in that thick, thick brush, I, I can tell something's watching me. Not sure yet. Hopefully we'll get a, a look at it and maybe it'll give me an idea. But uh, it's really, really hard in that thick brush to see anything. I have seen in the past 15 years, uh, there's been rare occasions where I've seen movement in the daytime. Most of the time, I know that the most activity will be at nighttime because it's much harder to identify him. Uh, if he comes in close, it's usually going to be at nighttime. The one photo I have that we believe was a Bigfoot was probably taken at 100 yards away, unfortunately using a cell phone on a scope. But there was clearly something there. And that's about as close as we normally have a chance of getting during the daytime to this creature. Nighttime, if they're curious enough, they'll sometimes come into the camp. I do look around the woods a little at night, not a lot, because I've found that letting them be curious works better than trying to track him at night and be active. You're not gonna out track him. You're not gonna out gun him. This is his territory. This is his kingdom. We're gonna see what happens. Hopefully, the truth will come out. If nothing else, the evidence will keep piling up. Now this is strange. You see this rock? outcropping nothing strange about that let me show you what's strange let's uncover it here see all that it was a fire some people believe Bigfoot can light fires but this is hid behind this outcropping this is not a camper Now I smell rotten flesh and usually when I smell rotten flesh, Bigfoot is somewhere close. Quite often that's where I find bones, sometimes fresh bones. Those rocks stacked right over there. I found stacked rocks before right in a creek, stacked one on top of the other in the middle of nowhere. Well, the wind's coming up. That's not going to help me. I'm here by the back of the truck uh, getting prepared for the night. I'm going to be out there tonight in the woods. We're going to see what we can find. Now, right here in this particular area, I don't have to worry about stepping off a ridge. I do have to worry about the gully, so it's easy to get hurt, which is one thing, reason I refrain from going out in the dark uh, in these areas. It's very rough. It's very rugged. And I am alone. If I get hurt, nobody may find me. But I am getting prepared. We're going to see what we can come up with tonight.
Well, I'm back here in the back of the truck trying to clean this mess up. And I've had two nights of something really weird happen. I'm in a small, you might say, valley right now. I've got a tall ridge, a short ridge, and I'm in a small valley. Wind is sort of weird here. I don't know why. And the other night, I put my tarp over the cab because I've got the slots in it for shooting movies and taking pictures. So I've got a tarp and I cover it over. The tarp is so big it covers the whole truck, it covers the whole back, it hangs off the end. Big tarp. And I woke up to hear a sound. Sound like something lifting up the tarp. And then bam, boom. The whole tarp is yanked off towards the end of the truck that I enter. Whole tarp, boom, gone. Well, there was a little wind and I'm thinking, you know, God, it, it, what was that? You know, it can't be the wind. The wind's not that strong. But it's just sort of, it was sort of really spooky to wake up and have to, you know, see your tarp being yanked off. And so, uh, the following night, I went ahead just in case it was the wind, and I put the tarp on and I tied it down this time. So, I wake up again. I'm hearing this sound. It sounds like something's getting up under the tarp. All of a sudden, you know, I can see right above the end here, I can see the tarp. That's why we have the tarp over. And I see the tarp all of a sudden, shoo, and it's all of a sudden drawn tight, like it was trying to drag it off the end again, but it was tied down and it couldn't. But I saw that tarp lift up, all right? Now there's not enough wind to do it, but I saw that tarp lift up and then when it wouldn't go, it dropped back down. You know, and I'm trying to look out the side, I can't see anything. I don't know what's going on. All I know is that's real weird. And and like I said, the first night it happened, it, it was sort of scary because choke, my whole tarp's gone. But I thought, let's be practical. Maybe you had a gust of wind. Second night it happened, wasn't no gust of wind. I could hear something getting on the tarp and I saw that tarp yank up here towards the end and be drawn tight. And when it wouldn't go because it was tied down, it was just released. Can't explain that. I couldn't see anything. It was dark as, as poo out here, but you know, that's spooky. Now, I've had these strange events like the tarp being yanked off the trailer before. I've been coming up here for years. Last year, I think I got closer to Bigfoot than ever before when I was awakened from a hammock growling right there in the camp. It's pitch black. And I jump up to try to get my flashlight and my camera, and a strange whistle came off the hill. He disappeared. He's gone in a blink. I grab up my camera and light and search, but he's already out of the camp. He's gone. So... It is spooky up here. I've had one guy tell me he will not spend a night in these woods. Well, a lot of people ask me, aren't I afraid to be out here? There's not too many stories of Bigfoot hurting anybody. Could it happen? Yes, it could. But actually, I'm a little more afraid of the bears and the cougars. Those are known to kill people. They're out here. Have to face your fear sometime. That's the only way to find the truth. Well, it's an experience. Maybe one I'll be telling my grandkids someday. From my location up on one of the ridges down lower, a big fog was coming. I mean a dense, heavy fog. I don't like to be up there when those fogs come. There are things walking in that fog that you don't even want to meet dangerous, really dangerous. 
So I moved to a lower location and then moved farther down. We'll be fine here. Night's coming again. We'll see what happens. Or not. Looks harmless enough. Let me teach you something. That is a huge bone. Think maybe we're in Squatch territory. Now, the reason I'm wearing this bright orange right now, we're in an area where the hunting's going on, and I'm required by law to wear it. I don't like it, uh, but I have to wear it. But we're almost in a Squatch-like area right here. I mean, this is really, and I just found a huge, huge bone here. Looking at that rib. It was literally tore out of Sutton's chest. I want to remind everybody again, what I am doing is real. It's not a fake TV show, and it is dangerous. As you can tell by this bone, something died here. My ass, even with these boots on, is tough up here, especially carrying this camera. It's hard to balance. At least I didn't go in the river. to get hurt here. Gonna watch out for the rattlesnakes too. This is a great spot for them. I guarantee you this is as squashy as you can get this area right here and this, this is the area where we found this bone real not made up it's real there's no telling what is close to us right now Uh, we
we located this bone. This is, in fact, I verified a rib. It is a rib bone. And the strange thing is we located this uh, in the edge of the river just below what appeared to be a big bed of mulch, a big bed of mulch where it appears something was laying there because it was all packed down. But there had been a bunch of mulch scraped together. It was cedar mulch, all cedar trees around it. It had been scraped together and created, I guess you'd say, a, a mat or a bed. And uh, you could tell something was laying on it because it was compressed. I'm not sure what that means. I only know it means that there was some animal that was there, that it was laying in, in mulch. It apparently is a big animal and it's very, very heavy. This bone, uh, it's not human bone. What other animal could it be? Well, some would say a cow bone. Well, normally a cow bone is a lot bigger than this. And, uh, there are no cattle in that area. I mean, this is back in the wilderness. There are no cattle in that area. Somebody asked, well, could it be a Bigfoot bone, a Bigfoot rib? I don't know. Since we have no Bigfoot DNA, there's no way I can verify that it is or not. All I can verify is that we found this bone below a big bed of mulch in which some large animal had been laying in, and it was right in the edge of the creek. It was right on the edge of the actually more of a river it's pretty big uh, so we're finding stuff it's interesting why is it there what put it there I don't know I'd like to find out but there is evidence that there was a large animal there there's evidence there's a bone there's photographs of me picking it up it's all real <music> Wind's blowing pretty hard. Looks like a storm may be coming up. A lot of people laugh about Bigfoot. They have no clue. They have no clue how big these forests are up here. Over a million acres alone in just Arkansas. Not counting all the land in Oklahoma or the top part of Texas. It's huge. It's rugged. It's, there's plenty of game there. There's nuts. There's acorns. There's hogs. There's wild deer. There is food to eat there. Yes, it is possible because the bears exist there. If a bear can exist there, why couldn't Bigfoot exist there? Bears are huge, 300 pounds. They don't care if you see them or not. Bigfoot does. That's the difference. Bigfoot's more intelligent than a bear. But you can still walk right by a bear in there and never even see him.
It's chilly this morning, but this is an excellent vantage point. I can watch this little valley. I can watch the top of the hill. Now, I've been pretty lucky so far. I'm going through these ridges and these gullies and everything. I hadn't seen a single snake. I've been real lucky because it's still warm enough for them big rattlers to be out. Did run across a big raccoon. That, that raccoon was big enough to ride to town. I mean, he's big. A lot of people don't realize you got to stare clear of them things. They've sort of got bad temperament, and they will attack. You don't have to worry about a possum, but the raccoons, they will attack. So there's a lot of things you got to watch out for here. This strange stuff I find up here uh, is some kind of fluorescent blue mushroom. I've never seen anything like that one before, and I've been up here a lot of times. I see some strange things up here, but a fluorescent blue mushroom. Is a lot of people laugh about Bigfoot existing in these forests, over a million acres just here in Arkansas alone. Most of these people got opinions, but they couldn't survive out there one week. They couldn't survive out that forest out there without a compass. They couldn't even find their way out. So-called experts, never been in the woods, never been in a wilderness situation, know nothing about animals, but they all have opinions. Well, I can tell you this. There's a lot of animals that have already been found to exist when they thought they were extinct. Don't count Bigfoot out. It's rugged in there. If he can exist, he can exist there. Now we're down close to one of the waterways. Spring, there's a lot of water here. Usually in the summer, it dries up quite a bit. But Bigfoot wouldn't have to come down here to get water most of the time anyway. There's natural springs up in them hills. He knows where every one of them. It's not necessary for him to be here. He doesn't have to show himself unless he wants to. He can literally survive up there with little or nothing for extended periods of time.
Now, Native Americans have long swore that Bigfoot brings prophecies. But there's more. There is evidence. The evidence was written by a legend. 1836, Nacogdoches. Davy Crockett himself wrote a letter home to Abner Bergen. In part, whether it was the anxious disturbance or possibly the heat of the high sun, which caused an apparition to slowly form in front of my eyes, I know not. As a Christian man, I swear to you, Abe, that what spirit came upon me was the shape and the shade of a large ape man. The likes we might ex expect among the more bellicose and hostile Indian tribes of the territories. The shade formed into the most deformed and ugly continents, covered in wild hair, with small needling eyes and large broken rows of teeth. The monster then addressed a warning to me. Admiral told me to return from Texas to flee this fort to abandon this lost cause. When I began to question this, the creature spread upon the wind like a morning steam swirls off a frog pond. I swear to you, Abner, Davy Crockett was on the way to help defend Texas. Bigfoot appeared to warn him to turn back. As we all know, Davy Crockett died at the Alamo. Davy Crockett was known to be an honest, true, and Christian man. This letter has been verified. There is nothing from his description that, that he clearly met Bigfoot. It's simply that. He clearly met Bigfoot. And the fact that a prophecy was given to him by Bigfoot is more evidence. On this expedition, we did find more information. We did find more evidence. The evidence clearly is becoming less and less over the last 15 years. I've been up here many times. Why? We don't know. Is it because people are moving into the area in these remote areas? Is it because more people are out hunting because of hard times? I don't know, but the evidence is clearly becoming less and less. Uh, yet through the years, I have gathered quite a bit of evidence as I've showed you in the movie, like the shelters. What created those shelters? Well, Hopefully someday we'll have the answer. There are people who say Bigfoot is a demon, a mountain demon. There are people who say, I know what I saw, it was Bigfoot. I know with a with hundred percent. And then I have people say, I've never seen Bigfoot. He doesn't exist. Why is it some people have the opportunity to see Bigfoot and so many don't? Is it because they're not in the right place at the right time? Is it because they're not looking for them so they pay no attention? I don't know. But the witnesses I interview are very, very sincere. 